when you stand back and you look at the entire system, you look look at the entire corporate monstrosity that it is, look at what happened in Canada at the G20 summit, look how it's happening all around the world and how very gradually all of our police forces are becoming militarised, look at what's happening in the Gulf of Mexico, look at who runs the whole situation, Bilderberg Petroleum and Halliburton, or with the approval of the Obama administration, which is basically puppeteered by the same banking cartels. You see, America is a corporation run by the Crown Corporation out of England. That's all America is, folks. It was never a country. It's always been a corporation. Now, when you can take all of these things into account, you begin to see how this whole thing is structured. So you're looking at the oil spill, you've got to get away from the BP and Obama administration thing. It's much bigger, folks. It's much bigger than that. It goes way back to the banking cartels because it's all puppeteered by the banking cartels. I'm not saying the banking cartels are the actual boss of the system or the head of the Illuminati snake, but the banking system is definitely the head of the control snake. That's why I spend so much time talking about the banking system because it is the banking system that's used to basically control the rest of the corporate system down the food chain. I personally think that if people could just wake up to the control the banking system actually exercises over them and remove themselves from that system, stop complying with that system, then the mere act of doing so would remove so much stress from the human psyche. Because everyone's always worried about money all the time. Everyone's always stressed out about money. No one has time to listen to what you want to say. No one has time to look at how the system actually runs because everybody has to spend their time chasing after the dollar. Everyone has to worry about bills. Don't tell me that. I'm too busy. I have to have two jobs because I have all of these debts. I have to keep them paid. I have to look after all the things the kids want because the kids want to collect trinkets the same as the neighbors are. This whole system, folks, it's all designed to keep you stressed. And if the interest was removed from money itself, the interest that's placed on money by the Federal Reserve and central banking system, then all the goods in our countries would probably cost around an eighteenth of what they do now. And this system is privately run, and all of the interest that is paid on all of the transactions right down the line well, all of this interest goes straight into the coffers of the international banksters. I think that's something to think about. Wouldn't you agree, folks? I was talking to a friend the other day, and we were talking about the possibility of forming a new political party. And you know how I feel about political parties, folks, but I thought it would just be a party that people could go and vote for, and we'd perhaps name the party, I don't want to vote for any of the other guys. And we could have one policy in this party, and the policy would be the old system is broken. We need a new system. I wonder how that would work, folks. The only problem with doing that is you'd probably find that a large amount of people would actually vote for you, and then you'd have to go and spend time sitting in the Senate and putting up with the smell. I don't know, but perhaps it would send a clear message to the banksters and criminal politicians that we have at the top of our system that we really don't care for what they're doing to the world anymore. We need to do something, folks. We simply can't allow this corruption to continue. So this is why I've been attending the local community awareness and community action group that I've been attending for the last six weeks, just as a platform to provide support to those people who are awake and also as a think tank to formulate methods of creating ripples in the community and building strong community. That is one of the main focuses of the group, is to build strong community, to focus on permaculture, focus on uh, newsletters, perhaps filmmaking, and these sorts of things. Ways of using the system itself in reverse, using the system that's brainwashed society into the state it's in as a means of deprogramming people and getting them back in touch with their humanity. That's mainly what we're trying to achieve with the group. I'm very pleased to say the numbers have been growing weekly. We started off with seven people uh, five or six weeks ago, and the meeting that we had last Monday night, there was actually 50 people in attendance. And that seems to be set to grow next week as well. I think we may have to find a new venue soon, actually. We're meeting in a friend's lounge room, so 50 people in the lounge room is definitely something to take notice of. 
though fortunately it is quite a large lounge room. In fact, we could probably fit another 10 or 15 people in there quite comfortably before we had to open the door onto the veranda or something. Well, I think we're getting close to break time here now, folks, so I'll leave it there for now, and we'll go and have a break, and I'll speak to you again in a few minutes. Thank you very much for listening. Welcome back, folks. Now, in looking at all the things that I've been talking about today, in looking at the oil spill, in looking at what happened at G20, looking at the militarization of the police, looking at the sabre-rattling against Iran, looking at the imminent collapse of the global financial system, looking even at Al Gore and Bill Gates suddenly appearing at the crucial time in the oil spill situation, riding their white charges in the form of their new film entitled The Shift, in which they are attempting to co-opt the entire environmental movement. It all really does begin to look like theatre, folks. You see, the environment is the one thing, the earth, the planet, is the one thing that can be used to unify everybody. If they can create enough hysteria and enough concern for the state of the planet, then they can use this as a method to unify the people under one law and one monetary system. You see, you have the human race, and we all see the damage that's being done to the planet, and we want all the damage to stop. I want the damage to stop, and I'd love to see a united human race. But I wish to see us united as brothers and sisters, united spiritually, united with the planet. And I think that uniting us by means of a privately run monetary system and carbon tax and a police state that's being put in place in order to protect us from ourselves is not the way to do it. You see, that's the thing with all these folks. They go out and trash the planet as much as they can and they create a situation where everybody is begging for some type of environmental sanity and then they offer you their system of control, problem, reaction, solution, Hegelian dialectic. This is how it always works, folks. And they use something very close to your heart because we all care about the planet. We all care about the environment. None of us want to see the earth that we live on reduced to an oil-soaked blackened rock that will not support life. It's not in anybody's best interest to see this happen or to allow it to happen. And so they use our concern for our environment and our concern for our planet as the very mechanism with which to put in their system of control. They do this by trashing the planet themselves and then saying it is us that's doing it and saying that we need carbon tax and we need more control over the people and more freedom for corporations in order to fix the problem. You see, it's all in reverse, folks. We need the charters of all these corporations instantly revoked and we need to put control of the planet back into the hands of the people, exactly the opposite of what they are asking us to do. There's no good putting control of the planet into the hands of the very people who've created all the problems. I hope you can see what I'm saying here, folks. Because it is these corporations that have caused the problems. It's not the people. It's not the everyday people of society. We may use certain substances that are pollutive, such as plastic. These substances are given to us to use by our governments. But we elect these governments to act in our best interest. So we naturally assume that when they present us with a new product, then this product is good for the environment. This product is a healthy, wholesome product. And then they say, oh, no, look, you've been consuming all this really toxic and pollutive trash for the last 50 years, and now it's your fault the planet's ruined, and so you're going to have to pay for it by giving us more control. But if you look deeper, they should also say that this has all happened, of course, because you all used the stuff that we gave you to use. And in fact, we put systems in place to ensure that you had no choice but to use and participate in the toxic system that we constructed for you. That's the thing, folks. This whole system has been constructed for the people. And no matter how you look at it, folks, it's a toxic system. In fact, it's toxic in its every aspect, folks. Toxic in its use of the environment and its use and its treatment of humanity, its treatment of the human psyche, its treatment of the human race in general, folks. 
and even the food they are feeding us has become very toxic. You know, I saw an article in the Guardian newspaper not long ago where they were saying that people who insist on eating organic food have a psychological disorder. Yes, folks, they're saying that if you have a problem with chemically created, genetically modified food, then it's a psychological disorder. And folks, even the Vatican, if you ever had any doubts about the Vatican, folks, the Vatican is now endorsing genetically modified food. The Vatican claims that genetically modified food is praiseworthy. So if there was ever any doubt that the Vatican was a major part of the New World Order, that doubt can now be put to rest.